pay attention, it's a little bit confusing. A couple is desperately trying for one more child. When they're unable to have it naturally, they enlist a surrogate. But then nine months later, when the baby arrives, the couple isn't even notified. The surrogate has taken the baby for herself. That's just the start of this story. 49-year-old Barbara and husband David desperately wanted a fourth child and chose 22-year-old Jamie to be their surrogate mother because she was happily married. Using David's sperm and Jamie's egg, the surrogate mother was soon pregnant. But by her first trimester, the couple found out the surrogate and her husband separated. Soon after, the surrogate Jamie stopped talking to Barbara and David altogether, not even informing them when she went into labor. Jamie took the baby, Kaylee, and the parents have been fighting for custody for the last seven years, but are only allowed visits two weekends a month and have been forced to pay $459 in child support. Ooh. Wow. Yes, this is very confusing, and joining us now is Fred Soberberg, the uh, family law litigator who is currently representing Sofia Vergara in her embryo battle with her ex-fiance. But what, what can the couple do in this scenario? Well, part of the problem is if the couple didn't go about this process properly to begin with. The problem in this case is that this surrogate is what we would refer to as a traditional surrogate. That's not how we do surrogacy today. In other words, her egg was used. She used her own egg, and she took sperm from, I think the man's name was David. So she is so the she's biological the, she's mother the, of Genetically the and biologically, she's the mother. And legally, one of the things that the law looks at in determining who is a parent is a biological connection. So the way this should have been done is that they should have either acquired a donor egg and implanted the donor egg in the surrogate, or alternatively, there should be an adoption by the mother, but the surrogate would have had to consent. So that would have all do that had been done case. before, right? All of that should have been done before, and it's very unusual that when you do one of these things that you don't set it up in a way that you can screen the surrogate. This lady went and delivered the baby, didn't tell them. How could they have not known that? And I think what this, th what this brings up here is in this country, uterine surrogacy is legal. In parts of Europe, it is not. And certainly in parts of uh, other parts of the world, it is not. But here it is legal. And we have said it before. There are so many paths to parenthood. You can be a biologic parent. You can be an adoptive parent. You could use a uterine surrogate. You can use a donor egg or donor sperm. And this can get medically and socially confusing, but there are significant legal issues that, as we just heard, if they're spelled out from the beginning, this should be clear cut. I want, I want people listening to this story at home to understand that just because you know someone who says, you know, socially, yeah, you know what, Drew, I'll, I'll give you an egg. I, yeah, I, I would be happy to do it for you. Okay, resist, <laughs> resist all temptation to go about that saying, well, I know the person and I trust the person. This is a legal and medical contract. It is. The issue is that people go into this process, many of them desperate to have a child. This case that you talked about is a little bit unusual because this couple already had children. But oftentimes, people go into this process and all they think about is, I want to have that baby, and they don't care what they have to do to get the baby. And so people will do crazy things like make deals with friends that they'll raise a child together, and they don't set forth ahead of time in writing exactly what their expectations are and who is going to have the rights to that child and who is going to be the parent. You know, you oftentimes hear about a lesbian couple, for example, that needs a sperm donor. And they think in their minds, this is somebody that they know and that they can trust, and he's going to be the quote-unquote uncle. They don't know that he's yeah. thinking, I'm having this child, and I'm going to share custody when this child is born. Or Everything changes his mind. Everything needs to be spelled exactly. out beforehand so there isn't a controversy And it makes later. sense that people yeah. think that, that they have rights like that. Do, do you mind if I digress since we have Fred here? Drew, you can I know digress. It's, it's not want. exactly family law, but if, if a man buys breast implants for his his wife and they get divorced, I mean, are those breasts community property? If they're in a, <laughs> if they're in a community property state. Drew, what, what goes through your mind when you're about to go to sleep at night? When, you know, like I've, always, I've, you know, I've seen this so many, so many times that, that a significant other gets, wow. is involved in getting breast implants for somebody and then they break up and it's like, well, you know. It, it's something Obviously, you, you can't well, blame the breast implants. In your premarital bones, agreement. It, it's an it's something you should address in the premarital agreement. Very yes. good. Point. And you've oh. worked it out beforehand. Just you like must you be a busy man. Can I, can I digress also? <laughs> sure. Fred, love your style. Yes. Yeah. That's it. Absolutely. Thanks for joining us. Really appreciate your input on that.